So if like I did last year, you were thinking of, of exploring a new keyboard layout um, to throw away QWERTY and, and embrace something that's actually been designed for efficiency and speed and comfort, uh, then you'll want to be thinking about what kind of keyboard is going to be the best to, to make that work. So obviously, if you just use your laptop keyboard, those are all flat keycaps. You can physically move those around to a new layout. And then obviously, you can you can reconfigure the Mac. You can use something like Ukulele on the Mac to change the keyboard profile. And on Windows, there's a tool called Sharp Keys, which I haven't used, but it does appear that that's the kind of tool you'd want to look at. But I'm not an expert on Windows, so you could do a bit more research on that. But it is possible with those kinds of approaches. And you want to do this on the operating system level. So on the Windows, you want to use a, a tool to change it at the registry level. And on Mac, you want to choose the actual keyboard profile and, and get it changed at that level. So that's all possible. And with the flat laptop keycaps, that's that's quite a good approach. Um, but obviously, don't rely on the on the letters to learn the new layout. It's just really just to know that there's, you know, if you did just want to use it with one hand and kind of knowing that the keys are in the right place, but don't use that as part of the learning process. So, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of advantages to, to good quality mechanical keyboard. But the problem with some of those is they have a sculpted keycap set, which is actually quite a nice way of, of typing. It's, it feels good. It's a, a quite ergonomic to have the keycap sculpted, but they're printed with the letters, which means you can't then change them from row to row. So that's actually not a great keyboard to have if you want to try using a different layout because you need an alternative keycap set. So I think essentially if you have got a mechanical keyboard with a sculpted keycap set, you want to use those as blanks. You know, there's no point in using letters. If you're at that level with typing anyway, I don't think you really need any uh, keycaps visible. You know, you shouldn't be looking at the keys while you're typing. So if you are getting a mechanical keyboard with sculpted keycaps, it's worth just getting blank ones. I think it makes things a lot easier. You don't have to move them around and you're not stuck in the same keyboard layout. So if you're using your native Mac hardware or your Windows laptop hardware, you obviously need to, to set up that keyboard to work with your new layout at the operating system level. But if you're using a custom keyboard, it doesn't matter. You know, you can set that up on the keyboard and just plug it in over USB. You don't have to do any configuration. So this is the point where I think a good mechanical customizable keyboard is a really good idea and just kind of move away from using these arbitrary keyboards that are stuck into the hardware all the time because that lets us get away from the stagger as well. The other nice thing about using a custom mechanical keyboard where the layout is on the keyboard and you haven't got to fiddle with the computer settings to, to make that work is that it works nicely between any device. And if you're using a keyboard setup for a Mac environment, then you can use that with an iPad as well. So it, it's much nicer to keep your keyboard layout stuff on the keyboard, I think, and not try and fiddle with the computer too much to achieve that. And that's the reason I actually don't use a laptop as a laptop anymore. I'm going to replace it with a Mac Mini at some stage, but I have no need for that portable computer format with someone else's idea of what a keyboard should be. The other interesting thing about hardware with using an alternative keyboard layout is you'll see the keyboard I'm using has only got 36 keys, which means there's no row above the top row. And I think that's actually really useful for learning a new keyboard layout because whenever I switch back to a keyboard that has that row, I find myself overshooting that the normal top row and hitting the keys beyond. So I've obviously adopted a little bit of sort of a, a sloppy approach and my fingers will hang over those top keys but of course that probably means I'm just hitting them a bit quicker and a bit easier so it's nice to know that you can do that you just reach for the top key you haven't got to stop yourself going too far you know the key in front of your home row is the only key there so if you're going for it you can just go for it quickly and come back you don't need to sort of be precise um, hitting that top row so I think actually that makes a really good case for something like a 36 key keyboard uh, when you're learning a new keyboard layout in particular and you want to try and keep that efficiency high and the other advantage to having fewer keys is all the muscle memory that you are drilling whenever you're using it, even when you're using your symbol layer or you know any, any other layer, your number layer on that keyboard, you're still drilling the exact same muscle memory that you use for your letter keys. So you're sort of reducing the need to learn more uh, positions with your fingers and beefing up that muscle memory for your main letter keys as well. So you're, you're really reinforcing that finger pan that you use for your typing. And obviously, if you're learning fewer muscle positions overall, I think the process is a lot easier and a lot quicker. So if you're looking at different keyboard layouts, and like me, you, you've gravitated towards Colmac, which appears to be quite a lot easier to learn coming from QWERTY. So Colmac is a little bit of a confusing one because at first glance, it looks like there's quite a few different layouts um, and options as to whether or not you should use it. If you're using a staggered keyboard or a columnar or also a linear keyboard, there are different uh, layouts that work better in those scenarios. But actually, it, it does seem that the it's been simplified as time has gone on, and Colmac DH is now the same if you're using on stagger or for linear so there was a variant that 
that are, that was slightly better on a staggered keyboard, which is called, now called Colmac DHK. Uh, it's all very confusing, <laughs> but basically Colmac DH improves on normal Colmac. So if you're starting new, I would just start with Colmac DH and, and not come from normal Colmac. Uh, Colmac DH reduces the inner column use, which I think is a good thing. That's a, a horrible thing to have to do is to get the other inner columns with your index fingers. So anything that reduces that usage is a good thing. And um, then there's the, the Colmac DHM, which is now exactly the same as Colmac DH. So don't worry too much about that. Just go for your Colmac DH. So I've done quite a few videos now on different kind of custom mechanical keyboards, which I think are such a good solution if you're interested in pursuing efficiency and productivity when you're working with a computer. So do have a look through the channel and enjoy some of those videos and um, you know maybe consider going down that route, especially if you're thinking about changing keyboard layouts. Obviously combining the two at the same point in time is a good idea. You don't want to learn a new keyboard layout on Stagger and then think, okay, actually ortholinear and columnar keyboards are much better and then have to learn that on top of that. So if you did it all at once, it would make it a lot easier. Thank you